Welcome, in this video I'm going to show you how you can perform a Games Howl postdoc test for OneWay ANOVA using Excel. Now there unfortunately isn't the fast way of doing this, so this is going to take quite some time to actually perform. Uh, I'll be using some uh, example data with three locations, one, two and three, and a uh, grade given uh, by each student. So this student was at location three and gave a grade of 15, or obtained a grade of 15. Like I said, this is going to take a while, so I um, hope uh, it will all be clear. The first thing we need is actually to calculate how many there are on each location. I set up a few tables, as you can see, it's going to take a while uh, up here, so just to help along. The first thing we need is for each location, in my case 1, 2 and 3, uh, so I have three categories. I need to actually count how many there are in each. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do count ifs but only if um, in column B there is at least a grade. So column B, the criteria, has to be that it's actually going to be greater than A and a 0. So that way it will count only if um, there is a grade. Then the second criteria is of course that in column A it should actually have uh, this one and I can now actually close all of this, enter and there are 16 people in location A, 19 in location 2 and 13 in location 3. So you might notice I put here each time the, the formulas, perhaps sometimes they might be slightly different here of course the order has changed but that doesn't matter. The next one is the average for each location so what I can do is average if and then I first have to specify the range of the location which is there and it needs to be mm, this location and then the average range of column B so then control enter and then copy paste uh, down then we need the sum of squares in order to do that we first need to actually um, come up with uh, this one up here so what we're going to do here is we're going to create a formula uh, that will actually uh, calculate um, uh, the difference between this grade and the average of this location. So again, uh, it needs to have a value, so what I'm going to do is if um, B2 is, so if this value uh, is nothing, then it shouldn't actually do anything. And otherwise, what it should do is it should take this value and then subtract and then use VLOOKUP to look up this location and it needs to look it up in this table up here uh, F4 is to put dollar signs all around it, you can also just type in those dollar signs semicolon um, and then I want the 1 to 3rd column and it needs to be an exact match then it needs to actually square those results and that's all there is that it needs to do I can copy paste this down and with a bit of luck as you can see it skips now the blanks. Then here I need to sum based on the location so equals uh, sum if uh, the range is going to be the locations and then the criteria is up here again and then it needs to sum up the values in column C now. Copy paste these down then the variance is actually nothing else than simply this value divided by uh, the number of items in that category minus 1 between parentheses. You can copy paste that down as well. And we need a few other ones which is the variance divided by the number of items. And we also need, and this looks a little bit tricky but it's actually okay, it's this one and then uh, squared divided by again the number of items in that category minus 1 and I can actually copy paste these both uh, down. So now we have all the basic input, now we're going to do all the comparisons. I'm going to do all of them, so I listed 1, 2, 3 locations and 1, 2, 3 locations. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add the differences between the two means. So in this case it shouldn't actually do anything because these two are the same. So I'm going to actually start here just to s immediately get some result. Equals if and then the first thing we need to test is if this one and then I'm pressing the row numbers is equal to the this one uh, and that 
only should be fixed by the column um, then it shouldn't actually do anything otherwise what it should do is it should uh, look up and then uh, this one you can also reverse the order um, fix the column in uh, this table and then actually block the table with F4 again return to me now the third column and it needs to be an exact match minus and then uh, the same thing but then actually of the row so I'm actually gonna save myself some time and use copy paste and then instead of this one I now need this one to be looked up and the row there needs to be fixed now I can close this whole thing and press Control enter or enter and it shows me the difference between the average of category 1 and 2 I can simply copy paste this now to my entire table and as you can see it now nicely leaves the uh, the diagonal left alone and these are always the same except for the negative because this is doing uh, 1 minus 3 and this one is doing 3 minus uh, 1 right so to some extent you could even uh, set it up so that you only see half of the table and in this case only these three values the next thing we need is the standard error for the studentized range distribution and a heads up already I don't have a function for the studentized range cumulative distribution function I'll be using actually uh, a table and compare it to critical values later on so the standard error is actually going to be um, the square root out of 0.5 a half times and then we need to open the parentheses and we need to do a V lookup again and we need to look up this value and again we're blocking here the column and it needs to look it up in this table and also that needs to be blocked and we need to actually return now this this one the, the variance divided by n so that's one two three four five six six and it needs to be an exact match add to that the same but then of the row so again I'm gonna copy paste and then I'm actually gonna say well of this one one two and now blocking the row then we can close this sum then we can also close the square root and we actually have the result uh, one thing is that we again don't want the diagonal so I'm gonna copy paste this part of that if function and paste it in here and then press enter I get a warning about my parentheses but that's okay and then I can copy paste this whole formula like this now these standard errors are different than R and uh, SPSS would report because they usually report the standard errors that will go with the T distribution which are actually the same except that 0.5 so what I could do is if you really want those as well you can simply copy these and then actually paste it in here and then double click and remove that 0.05 there and enter and I can copy paste and these should have the same results as you see in R and SPSS however uh, underneath the hood in R and SPSS it's actually working with these then the Q is nothing else than the mean difference divided over the standard error so equals the mean difference divided over the standard error and of course it should again only do that if uh, so copy paste uh, if it's not on the diagonal and then copy the function and paste it all down and now we have our Q values so these are to some extent the test values for the studentized range distribution um, you could actually also calculate the T values which is then the same but now then using the uh, standard error as above so that's going to be this one the mean difference divided over this standard error and again we need the a blocking of the diagonal and we're going to put that in here there are different ways of actually blocking this diagonal uh, if you like but this works so uh, I'm not going to do much here anymore I'm only going to focus on the studentized range distribution so I need the degrees of freedom and that's a huge formula so I'm splitting it up in two I first do the numerator and then the denom uh, denominator so first the numerator is actually the sum of the two from this column and then squared so 
I'll first do this one up here, which is going to be a uh, V uh, lookup. Uh, actually, I'm going to square this later on, so open the parentheses already. V lookup, and then we're going to need this value one, two, three times to block the column. It needs to look it up in uh, this entire table again. I'm going to use F4 to make sure it doesn't change. And we need again 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the sixth uh, column. And it needs to be an exact match. Then I'm going to actually add up the. So copy this part and plus and paste again. And this one and F4 one two times now. And all of this needs to actually get squared. So this should give me the value that I'm looking for, um, which is actually the same as in here. So you could have copy pasted parts of it there. Then I actually also need to block the diagonal again. And let's do that up here. Enter, enter. And hopefully now again, it will not give me anything on the diagonal. Then for the denominator, I actually need um, the seventh column. So what I could do is I could actually copy paste this entire formula and actually change the region so that it actually becomes one further. Uh, needs to go like this. And then it needs to do the seventh column and add to that the other seventh column. Uh, column. It doesn't actually need to square anything and if you like just to be uh, complete you can actually move these as well. Uh, goes like this and now hopefully it actually works. Copy and paste. Then last but not least the degrees of freedom uh, for the degrees of freedom actually well not least sorry about that um, it's going to be this was the numerator and we need to divide that by the denominator and that gives us our degrees of freedom. Um, again, we need to make sure that it doesn't show up on the diagonals, which is kind of, of a pain to do each time, but all right. Um, we're only 12 minutes in, so hopefully you're still with me. Now these, uh, unfortunately, like I said, there is no uh, default uh, studentized uh, range distribution built in in uh, Excel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually round these down so that I'm more critical towards myself. And that can be done by using equals round uh, down uh, the degrees of freedom and up to zero decimals. And that's because my table with critical values doesn't have um, decimals for the degrees of freedom. So this is going to be 32. And that way it's going to pick a more critical uh, value. Oh, I need to copy this part and escape. And put that in here. Yes, and copy and paste again. Now finally what we can have to do is find the critical value that belongs to if we have a degrees of freedom of let's say 32 and like I have all the way up here in um, I5 that I have three categories. So I have a student ice table so and I've actually two, one at the 0.05 level. I got this from this website, always give credit where credit is due. You can also generate them yourself with using R or some other online tools. Um, with 32, we are up here and we need the critical value at 3 would be 3.4752. Now I can actually program that, so, or, well, program, I can use Excel to find that for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the index function. And the index is going to be on this entire table, which goes from here, control shift and right and down. So that's this entire table. And uh, what I wanted to do is as the row number needs to match. And then the match value is going to be uh, the 32, which is that one. And oh, and the, uh, this range, before I forget, needs to be blocked. So I'm putting on F4s there. Uh, this one doesn't need to be. And then it needs to look that up in the first column. Uh, which is actually from 
and let's go all the way back up from here to control shift uh, down uh, f4 before i forget and it needs to be semicolon uh, zero for an exact match that's for the row then for the column i also need a match and i'm going to match that based on the number of categories that i have which was up here that also needs to be fixed because it doesn't change and it needs to look that one up in the studentized table and it needs to look that up in here all the way to the right and again that needs to be blocked f4 semicolon zero and then i can close this entire index uh, this match i can close the index and this should give me the result that i wanted the 3.4752 Again, we need to make sure that it doesn't do it for the diagonal. Oh, we need to select the entire if part. And then finally, I can hopefully copy paste this, yes, uh, to all others. Then finally, we can determine if it's significant. And this can be done by simply checking is if uh, the absolute value of our Q uh, value, this one, if that one is if that one is actually bigger than my critical value then it should say yes then it means it is significant at the 0.05 level and otherwise no it isn't then again we need to actually put in here the criteria for that it shouldn't do the diagonal uh, okay and it doesn't want to do it so I close it myself oops doesn't recognize the name is if oh there's an extra F for some strange reason and why is this not going uh, if this otherwise do all of that and uh oh ah, I had two ifs that was it if there we go now it should work copy something went wrong with the copy paste there and there we have it so uh, groups one and two according to games how are significantly different uh, one and three are significantly different and um, let's see uh, two and one um, and which one aren't two and three are not so um, I'm not sure if this is uh, so this is my postdoc analysis for the games Howell. I can also do the same if you're still interested for the uh, levels of um, where I actually have at the 0.01 level. Uh, I'm simply going to be using now almost the same as up here, but my table has slightly changed. So control copy and uh, paste. And this actually starts at uh, V till AO. So I need to change that accordingly. So this is going to be starting at the W until the A O column. And let's see, uh, this should be now the V column. And I think that's all there is to it. So, oh, and this also is the same as the other one. It's now in the W um, row until the A O. Enter. And as you can see, oh, this one should be up here. Those are those critical values. Copy, paste. And then I can use a similar one as I've done there. Copy, paste. But now it's checking this one versus, and it should still be checking, of course, the Q value. So that one. And now I can copy, paste this one down, and I'm finally there. And as you can see now, uh, at the 0.05 level, uh, there is a significant difference between uh, uh, location 1 and 3, but at the 0.01 level, there no longer is. So that one shall probably be somewhere between 0.01 and 0.05. Well, sorry for the extreme long video, but I hope it was worth it. Uh, this was the only way I'm familiar with uh, performing a game's Howell postdoc test. If you know uh, with Excel, if you know a different way of doing this faster in Excel, uh, let me know. I'm always uh, curious. Hope it was helpful.